I'm going to turn you over to Brother Jason. Jason, help.
Um, and you're going to see more and more topics that are similar to the stuff that you've clicked on in the past. Well, that also means that maybe you're not seeing a different point of view. And so that's, that's an interesting point in and of itself, just to consider where the control lies right now, and whether or not you're in control or whether we're giving control up, right? But the thought of that, in terms of what available content is getting to me, really started getting me thinking about um, filters, it's filters themselves, right? Things that we put in our lives that either help us to keep things out or allow things in. And so I thought that we, you know, there's, there's a lot of applications, a lot of places that we can talk about filters, um, whether it would be on our mouths, right? We're filtering what we say, watching what we say, so that we know that the tongue is like a sword, right? We know that it can cause harm and everything else. We can put a filter on that. We talked about what, what kind of guards do you put around your life in terms of making decisions? Who do you go to for, for help or what have you? Um, <clears throat> Knows I'm not very good at that. always filtering my tongue or what have you. My wife will uh, say that as well. She told me last night that I didn't do a good job of that. So I'm not coming here as an expert necessarily. <coughs> but I'm just saying this captured my attention, this idea of filters. And one that I was looking at particularly kind of grabbed my, my eyes that I've been reading the scriptures lately that I thought I would share. So that's kind of where we're going to go this morning is looking at you know, a particular filter, because I think, like I said, any, any time you have a choice between right and wrong, there's a filter probably that could have been established, could have been leveraged, could have been used. But, Jesus specifically talked about one in the scriptures that I thought was interesting. In Luke, chapter 11, verses 33 through 36, he said, No one, when he has lit a lamp, puts it in a secret place or under a basket. Puts it on a lamp <clears throat> For those who come in may see the light. The lamp of the body is the eye. Therefore, when your eye is good, your whole body is also full of light. But when your eye is bad, your body also is full of darkness. Therefore, take heed that the light which is in you is not darkness. If then your whole body is full of light, having no dark, no part dark, the whole body will be full of light, as when the bright shining of a lamp gives you light. <coughs> so. I kind of want to go from this and just talk to, you know, our own lives, right, and our eyes, and what kind of filter we have in place <coughs> that's letting light in, right, to our eyes, or darkness in, or whatever, and the implications of that. Because I think this, I think God calls us to put a filter on what's going on for us to have control, to not give up control necessarily, right, and to actually actively manage that. I and mean, God desires our bodies are full of light for all the darkness to be eliminated. And I don't know if we necessarily ever get to that point on this side of heaven, right? This is always going to be a struggle, always something that we're going to be dealing with. Um, but we should strive for it because he says light is good, darkness is bad. <laughs> so why do you find the metaphor? What is he getting at? Um, or what does it all entail? You know, when there's darkness, you know, you continue to kind of where there's places to hide, right? There's places that we can we can put our sin kind of in the dark. We think that we're hiding something from ourselves, we're hiding it from people. Right? Why are sewers dark? Right? Nobody wants to see our crap, and we don't want to see our crap either. That's really what it gets down to. It's dark. We hide stuff away because we don't really want to see it. But these dark places are also the footholds that we're giving to Satan, right, in our lives. And if we See, if we have these temptations, these things that Satan constantly brings forward to us, right? He's whispering, he's trying to get our attention and everything else. We have these dark places, these are places where he goes, but, and, and we can't see exactly maybe what he's offering, right? It, it starts to change the, the character, or is this characterization of what it is? If you can't see it, you don't know what you're, what you're signing up for. And <clears throat> when there's light, there's no place for that sin to exist, right? If you're letting all this light in, there's no foothold anymore. And so we're all able to overcome the temptations by exposing them, right? Seeing them for what they truly are. Now, so that leads to a good question, right? The question that you really should be asking yourself is, so how do we make ourselves full of light, right? It says through the eyes, right? We, we're, we can be full of light, but okay, that's great. What, what do we do, right? A good eye, it says a good eye, uh, Jesus clearly taught that the light comes to the light through the eye. A good eye will bring light into the body, a bad eye will keep light out. 
So our eyes are truly essentially windows to our souls. We've all heard that or what have you. And we should ensure that we're actively deciding what we let come in. Now, this kind of sounds passive or whatever, right, in terms of setting up this filter and, and establishing things. It's really an active thing. And, we, and you got to have both a filter and you know, be active in your life and everything else. But hey, the first thing is, how do you get light? And Psalm 119 says, Be good to your servant while I live, that I may obey your word. Open my eyes that I may see wonderful things in your law. Now, this is a little obvious as a start, to be quite honest. And I, I, I'm certainly certain the psalmist wasn't exactly um, literal here with open your eyes. But I think the first thing you gotta do is open your eyes. Right? I mean, that's the very first thing. It's, it's talking to a willingness or a willfulness on your part to engage in truth and engage in the world around you and everything else. Um, you know, the Bible says that God is visible to us. He makes himself known. He reveals himself in amazing ways. Isaiah 6, right, we talked about Isaiah seeing him, said, you know, he saw the train of his robe filled the temple. You go, okay, and he had a wonderful vision or whatever, but, you know, I'm not going to have that. Well, at the same time, it says, two verses later, verse, I think, I think it's two verses later, or whatever, verse 3, it says, the whole earth is filled with his glory. He didn't leave it just for us having this vision or whatever, right? If we want to be able to see light, we want to be able to see God, we got to open our eyes. And you can see that, I think, you know, in nature. Everywhere you go, whether it's whether it's the oceans and the power, power of it, you can see it in the Grand Canyon, you can see it in everything that he's created. If you choose to open your eyes, you're going to see the glory of God in this world, whether you get down to the stuff I've talked about in terms of the mass expanse of the universe and the intricacies that... You know, make that work the way it does. Must be not too far from the sun, not too close. All the things are perfect. How can you not see him? You have to choose to close your eyes and ignore these things. Um, let's see, the or down to the small steps, whatever. So the whole earth is filled with this water. I think you have to choose to not see him. But so I think this is one area where where we can we can choose, right? You gotta open. You gotta open your eyes. This one place where, from from a filter perspective, we can look out, we can allow that in, right? Or we can choose to reject it, right? We can choose to not see what's going on there. We can set a filter up saying science, whatever you want. There's ways that we can do that, but we've got a choice on the filter of what we're letting come in with our eyes. Do we open our eyes? Do we see this, or do we not? Now, assuming that you open your eyes, right? Get past this first thing. You keep saying, "I'm open to seeing," you know, God. We're open to seeing what he's got to say or what have you. You know, you still have to ask yourself, well, okay, so we, we see some, we're getting some of this, this vision of God there, but how, you know, is that like, is that what I'm supposed to be filling my eyes with? Do I go out into nature? Do I just look at God's wonders and, and I'm going to be filled full of light? The reality is no. That gives you a, a glimpse of God or whatever, but he specifically says in Psalm 19, right, the law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul, the statutes of the Lord are trustworthy. Right? The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. So what gives light to the eyes? What, what does he specifically say will come in and give us light to the eyes that therefore will give light to our body? It's his commands. We've got to know God's word. We've got to, we've got to spend time in his word. We've got to, and I'm not great at this, we've got to memorize his scripture so we know his word. We've got to do these things, right? We have to intentionally seek it out and spend time there. And that's how we become filled with light. That's why I thought the Bible in the year thing that, that we kicked off, you know, back in February or whatever, was as important as it is. We have to be intentional about spending time there. We've got to make it a priority, and we've got to make sure that we're doing it consistently all the time. It can't be for the year, and then we're done. We, if we're going to have light, right, we've got to be reading the Bible. We've got to let that in. And we've got to spend time on it. So we've got to be intentional here. We've got to let it in. But as important as that, you know, and that is the way that we're going to get the light and everything else. But we also know that we live in a world where there's a lot of other distractions around us, right? We get so much time here. We get so much time, right, here, right, where we're getting the word. Maybe we even have so much time, you know, out here where we're, Praying, let's see how this works. Something like that, right? Where we're, we're, we're praying, right? So we've only got so much time 
to be quite honest, amongst these things where we're going to be letting light in, what's the rest of our time filled with? We've got you know things that are on TV or what have you that we're whatever we're, we're, we're that we're choosing to either let in to the filter or we're going to choose to let out and, and reject. Right? We've got things that unfortunately will. Dress, right now, this this is it. Is this one of those things that we should let in, or is this one of those things that we should be rejecting? Right? I said depends on whether or not we've got the ring or not. That's good, right? The other ones maybe not so much. In fact, I was thinking about this. One of the things that has I, I've seen in my um, in my devotionals of late spoke specifically to us and how we engage in temptation right around us here with our eyes on women that don't belong right um, Job knew something about this if you look at Job 31 it says I made a covenant with my eyes not to look lustfully at a young woman he had set up this filter right one thing when we when it's with our wife or what have you, right? We're married. But here, he had set up a covenant to establish this filter. And so this is balance, right? And and that was the that was the terminology that they that this particular devotional used that I think paints a really great word picture. Um, that your eyes have to bounce off of things that they're not, that they shouldn't be spending time on. Right? I mean, we've all been there. We've all done this, right? Where we've seen the good-looking woman. We're staring. What do we do? Our eyes go up and down, right? We're looking at her and we're going, we're, we're lingering. <coughs> and we're taking in the whole view, right? So you get this, you get this work picture. If we're going to bounce, right? Even if your eyes get over there, they bounce. They take off. You do can't slap. Do this instead. Yeah, you cannot no, slap. i doing this. <laughs> there you go. You cannot let it be. And honestly, this is just one aspect, right, of, of, of places where our eyes need to bounce. Because anything that is going to create lust or make us think about things in the way that we shouldn't be, it, it could be, you know, a brand new house with, you know, three car garage or whatever else that you're that you're looking at that is making you lust. Maybe your eyes have to bounce off of that. Maybe maybe it's the vehicle that you've been wanting. Or entirely too long. This is going to be really good, whatever. Oh, or the train, or whatever else. Don't you want a train? Okay. Anyway, I told you guys it was all the drawings today. But maybe, maybe it's maybe it's the car and you need to bounce. Whatever you're looking at that you're spending time on, right? You need to set up the filters on all the way around because your eyes are what's ultimately dictating the state of your soul, right? What with the whether you're getting light in there is going to be dictated on what you're allowing in. What, or what you're not allowing it. So you can say, okay, I, I, I'm, I'm working on this. I'm spending time here. You know, I'm letting light in or what have you. I'm enjoying nature, what have you. I see God's glory, what have you. Is, is it really that big of a deal if a little bit of darkness gets in? You know, I'm surrounded by darkness. I live in a fallen world. You know, outside of just saying, okay, we know that's not true because of Romans 6, right? We don't let sin or darkness abound because grace or God's light abounds all the more. We don't, we specifically says don't do that. But outside of that, I think one of the interesting things is to take this metaphor further with respect to vision and, and light and dark or whatever it is, what happens when you let a little darkness in, right, in, in those areas? Do you, do you have as good a vision as what you had before, right? I don't know anybody here that if we turned off the lights, <coughs> still had some light streaming in, but we let some darkness in, is going to be able to see as they can see now. Right? It's just not gonna it's not gonna happen. And Jesus, I think Jesus specifically talked about this, you know, in terms of our of letting the darkness in or, or closing our eyes to him um, when he was talking with his disciples, right? He talked in Matthew 13, he said, um, this is why I speak to them in parables. Right? Though seeing they do not see, though hearing they do not understand. You know, he's fulfilling his prophecies. He goes, But blessed are ye are your eyes because they see it, your ears because they hear for truly I tell you many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see and did not see it or hear. Right? There, there were people that were open to seeing um, that 
that there are people that have, had opened their eyes. They were looking for God, whether it was the rich, corrupt, young ruler, all these people that were following after him. There were people who saw that something was different about Jesus, right? They probably, they, they knew the scriptures, right? He said, he, Jesus asked him, do you know, you know, do you know what the, the commandments are? And he could respond. He, he read this stuff, but obviously he was letting darkness in. We knew that this guy, this guy had, had greed, right? He didn't want to lose his stature. He didn't want to lose his money. We know that there were a lot of people that followed him that didn't, that couldn't take what he had to say. So they were letting darkness in, even if they were trying to do something good. Other things, they didn't establish these, these filters the rest of their life. And what happened? They, they, they turned and walked away. They didn't have the right vision to make the next step to, to love what was in be the right thing. Um, and I think, you know, the, the darkness was prevalent, prevalent enough to cloud their vision, and, they, and then you don't make good choices. You don't take the right step. You don't see whether that step is going because you, you just can't see well enough, right? Um, and I think that's a scary thought, one that should make us want to establish strong and biblical filters and help others as quickly as possible to see the light, right? I mean, to get that, you know, to continue that metaphor. Now, to kind of package this all back up together, what happened, I think, one of the interesting things that I, I was thinking about is we kind of look at this and this as separate, right? We, we go, okay, this is what we got going in life and everything else, and so we, we, we try to do pretty good, right? And the other thing is, is this is, large, large majority of this is pretty visible to the outside world, so we, we try to put a pretty good face on what's going on here. And then we get home, and then this is kind of anonymous, right? Nobody knows exactly what's going on here, right? So we can be, you know, whatever we want to be or whatever, we can do whatever we want to do, right? I mean, we're not logging in with our name, maybe, or what have you, so all of a sudden, you know, this this web of available information, we can kind of let, we can kind of go look at whatever we want. Maybe it's not such a big deal to click on that link or spend time on that site, right? But the thing is, is you know what, the same eyes that are here are the same eyes that are here. This, there, there is no filter. Where it's the same body that's either full of light here, it's the same body that's full of light here. There is no difference. Whether you choose to log on or not, ultimately, it's not true that, that this isn't still a you, and that it's still not capturing who you are and, and helping you determine what's, what this content is. These 57 plus parameters are still tied into a certain extent with what's happening on your computer. So you've clicked in those links before. You know what's going to come up? Higher and higher and higher on the search engine next time? What's going to come up on the advertisements on the right? Do you think those are things that they're paying attention? Whether you think they are or not, whether you've logged in or not, they know based upon that computer address and everything else what you've done in the past. And they're going to tailor this up. You, we've given control of this up to a certain extent to, to what, you, what your history is. So who are you showing yourself to be with each click, with each website that you spend time looking at and everything else? Because who you are, all this, these filters that you're establishing in life or whatever, you need to bring them over here and you need to make sure that you're addressing them all the time while you're online because this is going to learn who you are and it's going to tailor that stuff to you. And so either you're going to make your life harder or you're going to have to be constantly rejecting the temptations that are going to be put in front of you or it's hopefully going to start getting somewhat easier and easier because you're going to recognize, I, I spent time here. This is what the type of stuff I'm going to click on and everything else, and ultimately this is the person that I am. So I just wanted us to think about that this morning. That God really talks specifically about the light of our eyes. Where are we spending our time? What are we letting come through? Right? Because what, what we let through is what's going to come out. If we want to be the men that God created us to be, if we want to be the testimonies to the people out in this world, we've got to let that light in so that it can shine out. And we've got to do that in all facets, right? Whether it's here or here, we've got to make sure that the, that's, that person is represented and has been as accurate representation of Christ in every case. So, I hope that was uh, valuable. Let's pray. Mm -hmm. So, what we're talking about really is the Bible is the filter. When we're talking about sanctification, we're talking about learning more and more of the Bible so that we increase it. We build up these filters. We know what to, how to go out and, and, and to 
bring in. And when we know the characteristics of God, we go over to the over to that uh, computer because God knows everything we do. You know, so He's open to everything. So to me, the filter is the Bible. And the more mature we come in our Christian faith, the more we know about the Bible. It's not, the church helps, prayer helps, but it's knowing the Bible. And that's what sanctification is. Before there wasn't the Bible, it didn't. We did what we wanted. We we don't continue in sin. We will continue to sin. We will sin, but it's, that filter is getting better and better all the time. Um, I noticed since I've been home and I'm on the computer that I'm looking up verses and proverbs and everything, and it's, it seems like that stuff pops up now. It's strange how, like I said, it, it knows what I'm looking for when I type something in. And it's like, whoa. It's like an intervention there. It's like helping you Absolutely. find more and more stuff easier and easier and easier. Right. So I see what you're saying. Right. You know, we can either make our life easier. Right? Or we're going to continue to make it harder. Because you know, that one time that you think that you're saying, it's all right, I'm going to go just take a quick look. It's not really that big a deal, right? Well, it's 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 going to be res residual in that memory. It's going to be there, and it's going to help now influence every single search after that. So we just have to consider that with, with all of our life, right? It's not just this once, right? Because every time we take a step away from where God's directing us to, it's not just a simple step back. It's always going to be a little bit hard. It's always going to linger a little bit longer than we would really like it to. It's never quite as simple as we think it's going to be. Virus. So, let's just pray for, for God's direction in that. Heavenly Father, I, I thank you for this morning. I thank you that you did give us your word for us so that we can, we can, learn it. Um, we can establish these filters that you want us to have so that we can get light into our bodies as you, as you call us to. I pray that your Holy Spirit would help establish, you know, this filter around us, Lord, that would help us to know right from wrong, Lord, to make wise decisions, but specifically, Lord, for our eyes, that we would only look at those things that you would have us look, Lord, that we would bounce from those things that we should not be lingering on, Lord, that are going to cause us to stumble. May our light that we get from you shine to those around us, Lord, so that it, it can just bring your kingdom. Amen. Amen.